I want you to read a scripture with me. Okay? Church is a good thing. Amen. Acts. I want you to go to Acts chapter number 13. Acts chapter number 13. Verse 36. Right. Um, the Bible says, For David, after he had served his own generation, David, after he had served his own generation, by the will of God, he fell asleep and was buried with his fathers and saw corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation, now give me the New Living Translation. Translation. Yeah. Now all these people who are making noise, they used to be like you. Stop. Sit down, sit down. The way you are, you are not hitting the drums nicely. Josh, you are fighting with the drums. So all these people you are seeing excited and shouting... They used to be like you. They were, they were worse than you. They used to wonder, what is happening? Are you listening to me? But I wa this scripture says that there is not a reference to David. For after David had done the will of God in his own generation. After he had done the will of God. Now, the question I want to ask you this afternoon, another version says, when David had fulfilled the purposes of God. I want to ask you a question. Why are you alive? Why are you alive? Why are you still breathing? Because you're, you're young, why are you still alive? Why did God create you? What are you going to say when your life comes to an end? How will you say it? What are you going to, what, what is going to be written about you? You see, for when David had served God's purpose, why did God create you? Why did God create you? Okay, you are here, you are feeling your big, you are feeling that, wait, 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 when him say, when you wallow a buyer, Juko Kopa. But I'm asking you a question. Natanguo Umekopa. Now Taki Kuko operate. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I want to ask you, don't blow that thing again listen why did god create you this is huda why did god create you ask yourself that question why did god create me so a lot of people would say god created me to be a pilot Uh, somebody would say God created me to be a politician. Yes. Somebody would say God created me to nifungue yes. kichinjio. <laughs> eh? But I have come as your pastor to answer that question in your life. That God created you to serve his purpose he created you to do what to serve his purpose you are not created to have sex <laughs> eh? that is not the purpose Sit down, sit down. 
You were not created. Are you listening to me? God did not create you so that you become somebody who's always having sex. Somebody who's always masturbating. Are you listening to me? Ada kablo kujai service. Umenyonga. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Shh. Sit down. Ata, ata, ata. Aujanawa mikono. Watu wamebeba aremis. Ah. Sit down. Are you listening to me? Hey, brother, brothers, brothers. These two, four guys. Concentrate. Concentrate. Don't do that. All right? All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't allow certain things. If you don't want to be here, don't come. But don't come and misbehave. All right? Listen to me. I'm teaching you. One day you'll regret. Are you listening to me, my friend? One day you'll regret. I'm a man of God. You One day you'll regret. You'll wonder, why did I disrespect that man? You'll have children. They will also disrespect you. Yeah, so change, change. Don't misbehave. Yeah, the four of you. Yeah. And if you don't, please, nobody is forced to come here. If you don't want, don't come. I mean, this church is, we are existing to help you. If you don't feel like you need my help, you go. Go and do your things and die wherever you want to die. But don't come here and disrespect me. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. Anyway, let me just, let me leave you alone. Why did God create you? That is what you should be asking yourself. Why did God create you? Yeah. All right? Yeah. Why did he create you? And I'm telling you that God did not create you to have sex. Because many young people are struggling with sexual behaviors. Some of them, you are even struggling with which sex you are. Some of you are girls and you are feeling like men. And some of you, ladies and gentlemen, and some of you, you are man, but you feel like a girl. Even your underwear, it is a gistry. <laughs> sit down, sit down. <laughs> but I'm here to answer that question in your life. That God created you to fulfill his purpose. Your life is not useless. I want you to repeat after me. Say, my life is not a useless life. God created me for a purpose. So that is why John 3.16. Now, when God creates you, he leaves you into the world. All right? Now, what the devil does is that the devil knows you are going to be a great person. All right? He knows this is Pastor Pinton. He knows this pastor is good. This guy is supposed to be a pastor. And he's supposed to be great. So from your early childhood. The enemy begins to disrupt your life. He can disrupt you by allowing your family to become a disintegrated family. A dysfunctional family. So he is trying to affect your destiny. Because the enemy cannot tell exactly what you will become. But he can tell this will be a great person. Yeah. So he decides that I am going to disrupt this man. I will introduce friends in his life. That are wayward. Friends that are not good. They will introduce weed. They will introduce cocaine. They will introduce alcohol. They will introduce sex they will introduce they will tell them that you don't have you ever had sex with a man 
It is different. And so what the enemy is doing is that he can see your end is great. So he's trying to stop you from getting to your desired destiny. So every one of you, you have a great destiny. Every one of you, you have a great destiny. I want you to repeat after me and make a confession and say, I have a great destiny. I remember one time in high school, because God has, has called me to a great thing. I was in high school and somebody came with heroin. Heroin. Yeah, I used, the first guy, thank you, in primary school, my first friend in primary school when I went as a boarder, it was the first day or the second day. He was called Isai. 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 He was coming from Jericho. He came with weed. Prima, not even, I, it had not been rolled. It had not, it was stone. And it was my first time. He taught me how to smoke weed. The enemy was attacking my life through that friend. Then when I went, I started smoking weed from that time. I was now smoking weed, smoking weed, and smoking weed. Then, when I went to high school, another friend came, and now him, he had heroin. Harder, something harder. He wanted to introduce that to me. But when, before I went to, to, to do heroin, I had a voice telling me, if you try this, you will never come out of it. That is what saved my, me from doing heroin. That if you try this, you will never come out of it. That is what. So Satan knows that you are supposed to be a great man. Even now, even you yourself, you don't believe that you can be a great man. And God has brought you to the church so that he can start working on you. Start changing your mind. Because let's, before you go to John 3.16, let's go to Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Wow. I can feel the anointing in the house. The Bible says, I beseech you, brethren. I want you to take the word of God serious. Look at what the Bible says. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, the first stage of going to become a great man who serves your generation is you present your body to God as a sacrifice. You tell God from now on, this body does not belong to Brio. This body does not belong to Johnny. This body does not belong to Jonte. My, 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 my penis does not belong to Scholar. Sit down, sit down. My, 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 my penis does not belong to Shiko. Or both. From this time forward, my body, the entire body, all that I am, I am going to give myself to God. That is the first stage of moving towards your purpose in God. You give your body as a living sacrifice. Are you seeing it? I beseech you. The, the writer is saying, I'm begging you. I am begging you. The word beseech is an old word of I am begging you. Don't give your body to demons. Don't give your body to other lustful desires. I beg you. Give your body to the Lord. Hey. And then he says, as a living sacrifice, allow your body to be holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable service so from today as you leave this place today make a decision that that pastor said to me I have a great destiny and I want to start going towards my destiny I don't want to be distracted I don't want to be stopped I want at the end of my life I will have fulfilled the purpose of God I remember one time I went, how did I get saved? I went to church. 
like you as a young person. I was going to go for, for, for jam session after the service. I was wearing my safari boots. I had my leather jacket. Hey, sit down, sit down. I had a leather jacket and I had my, my chain for Rasta, Rastafari chain. And I needed to go to church so that my mother would be happy and she would give me money. I had my friend Aleki and Dani. They had told me that they are going to Kutatuaribu. But as I was seated in church like you, an old man stood at the altar without teeth and he started saying, I regret, I regret that I never gave my life to God when I was young. He had no teeth. Not even one tooth. He was... Mimi. Mimi. I am... And he said, when he looks at the young people, he wishes that they would know that God is real, God is alive, and God wants to change their lives. So he said he regrets that he never gave his life to Christ when he was young. Hey, I was seated there at the back. I was like, these guys just there. Yani, where, by the way, what an one to moja. Anyway, what an yachan and anyin leo. Leo is kwanza. Let me let me have mercy. Sit, sit down. Allow me to pastor you. I'll tell you things. Okay. Now, are you listening to me? I was there. See, not a person who jam session. Like in a jiskia. Underwear, ni menuluwa na mama yangu. Iyo jacket, ni menuluwa na baba yangu. Kila kitu, ni menpewa. Hey! Sahara. I used to wear Sahara. I don't see them anymore. But those days, while I was in Kwarui, I was in Sahara. Ah! And I, I, and I thought to myself, what is this man saying? What is this man saying? He's saying that he's regretting that he never served God when he was young. I said, Lord, I'm giving my life to you. That is how I got saved. Actually, when I got out of the church, and I told my mother, I've given my life to Christ. She laughed. She said, it's a lie. I told her, you'll see. And from that time, I endeavored to offer my body as a living sacrifice. Holy. I wanted to be holy before the Lord. I wanted to be holy. I, want my, I wanted God to accept me. And I remember I went to high school. We were in, on midterm. So on the next day when we got to high school, Aleki, Dani, they came to me. They were saying, where Masha? They used to call me Masha. They said, where will you to let down, Maze? They laughed. They were rolling on the floor, laughing at me. Until I used, you know, those days, I don't know about these days. We used to carry chapati, um, uh, mandazi and some uh, and karango. I don't know where you as well, as was called pingwa. Pingwa, the oil that has been dried up with with dania and kitungu. Now you are squeezing in my generation Z. I'm nice of it too. Ah, they were pizza. Nilikuja kukula nikiwa adult. Nikiwa na family angu. That's the first time I ate pizza. Oh yeah. Are you listening? I went on, on that Tuesday. I gave them all my chapatis. I gave it out. I gave all my mandazi. I said I'm fasting. I'm fasting. That was the beginning of a change of my life. Today I will not be standing here. If I never made that decision. I made a decision. My life must amount to something. Before I leave this world, I'll have built this church. Before I leave this world, I would have raised pastors. 
before I leave this world, I would have prayed for people to be healed. Yeah. I, 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 my life is becoming meaningful. Yeah. All the people, all the Aleki, the Dani, Dani went crazy out of smoking weed. I met him on Langata Road, walking, collecting papers. But God saved my life by telling me, give me your body as a living sacrifice. And I'm here today. I'm here to tell you my children. I'm here to tell you my friends. Give yourself to God now. Because the, Lord, the devil has already seen you are going to be great. And he has been working and orchestrating how to stop your life from becoming a great life. That's why you are in drugs. That's why you are in sex. Some of you, if you don't stop, you'll die of HIV. Some of you will die of super gonorrhea. Ata labda sayi tu kiongea ukonayo. Unajikuna kuna. Unajikuna kuna. Hey. And I'm here. The church is not. Look, how much money do you have? You're saying we are, we are after your money. How much money do you have? You have been bust to church. We are not after your money. We are after your life. God wants to make your life meaningful. God wants to make your life a life full of purpose. Sit down. I want to ask you a question. What's your purpose? What's your purpose? And let me tell you, why do you need God? Why do you need God? Because you can only go and consult the manufacturer yes. ah. the, of the product, the purpose of the product. That is why every, everything you buy comes with a manual. Yes. Everything you buy comes with a manual. If you buy a microwave, you can't say, I want to make the microwave a phone. It is Ramtons or LG that tells you this microwave operates like this. Now, you need to give yourself to God so that he can reveal to you why he created you. If you are disconnected from God, you will never know your purpose. Because God is your creator. It's not your parents. It is God. That is why if you make decisions on your own, you always make wrong decisions. But if you consult God, you make the right decisions. Because your creator is God. Repeat after me. Say, my creator, my creator knows my purpose. So I cannot know my purpose if I'm disconnected from God. So that is why I must offer myself as a living sacrifice. After I offer myself as a living sacrifice, you go to the next verse, verse 2. Sit down, thank you. The next verse says, verse 2, quickly. It says... And do not be conformed to, the, to this world. How do you get conformed to this world? You become somebody worldly. Somebody who does the things of this world. You will never know your purpose. And he says, you now begin to live by what we call happenstance. Happenstance. You begin to live by happenstance. Like Kubatisha test. You must be connected to God. Oh yeah. So nobody should tell you, ah, well, at this one in the chat, what <laughs> our Me, they laughed at me. All of them, they were rolling on the floor in school, laughing at me that Nimeokoka. Sai, when they call me for our our alumni meetings, do you understand? Can somebody wake that boy? Sit up, sit up. Yeah, yeah. This is not a bedroom. Don't misbehave, please. Are you listening to me? Oh, yes. oh yeah. When, when, when they invite me for our alumni, alumni, Munajo alumni in Nini? Eh? When they invite me, they send me a letter and request me to speak. The ones who used to laugh at me. So, when you give your life to Christ, they might laugh at you. But who will have the last laugh? It is the one who has found their purpose. Oh yeah. 
So the Bible says, don't be conformed to this world. So the next, after giving your life, you start changing. You start changing. You start being transformed. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when we tell you, these guys who are shouting, jumping, they used to be like you. What has happened to them? Their mind has been renewed. And I'm praying that everybody that has come here today, God will start renewing your mind. And the first renewal of mind should be that I am called to a great thing. God has called me to do something great. Repeat after me. Say, God has called me to do something great. And for you to do something great, you need to be connected with God. Alright? You need to be connected with God. And he says, let the renewing of my mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God concerning your life. How do you know the will of God for your life? When you start being transformed. And what is the tool that God uses to transform your mind? The word of God. Somebody say the word of God. The word of God. This is an iPad, but it has the word of God. Can I have a Bible? Somebody has a physical Bible. My daughter has a physical Bible. This one. The word. This is what changes you. This is the manual of what God created you to become. This one. If you don't love his word, you will not know your purpose. You'll be lost. I remember I used to, during maths, don't do it, but <laughs> me, when I got saved, I used to read the word during maths lessons. I would put my Bible under the desk like this. I'll be reading. I'll be reading the word. I'll be renewing my mind. One time, the reason why I hate maths, <laughs> huh? <laughs> the maths teacher was wondering, what is this guy doing? Is that the same way the teacher came and looked at me and found me reading the word. And then he took the Bible, put it on the table. Then he slapped me. And then he told me, get out of my class. Don't ever be in my class again. So, I cannot tell you what I got in maths. That is why I hire accountants. Yeah. I have many accountants that work for me. Oh, yes. Because I cannot do accounts. I hate it. But this word has given me life. And has given me the ability to even hire accountants. Because my life has become meaningful. This word. So that is how you are transformed. And how can you know the word of God? The Bible says, how can you be, pre how can you be transformed? It says, you need a preacher. You need a what? A preacher. Who will open the word for you and teach you. And help you understand. That is why we come to church. To be taught the word. That's why we come. To be taught the word. That is why God has called me. To teach the word. To help people transform. I remember Pastor Ken. The one you are seeing here. You are resident pastor. Oh. This man when he came. He was also criticizing me. He was behaving like you guys. Now he's a pastor. <laughs> so even you. You can become pastors. Yeah, I, I cannot give up on you. Yeah. He used to, you know, he was not listening. He was just there wondering, why are these people so happy like this? Is it true or false? You can sh share with us, Pastor Ken. Oh, it's very true. Yeah. I was sitting at the back. I'm wondering, why are these people shouting? Why are they so happy? I mean, see, you can't see skize to Pastor Onge. So I was very, I, I was actually writing when they give, they give the visitors brochure. I said, it's too noisy. You are disturbing the pastor. 
I was like, I don't. I and don't today like is the most noisy person. <laughs> and he's not only noisy, he's a pastor of noisy people. Hey, sit down, sit down. I'm here to tell somebody you are coming to this church today was a setup by God. He wants to change and transform your life. Sit down, sit down so that they can see me. Look at my hand. Look at my hand. God is telling you, I want to change your life. Because the way you are going, you will die before your time. You will be pregnant out of my... Some of you young men, you don't even know what it means to be a father. And you are just dipping your, your stick everywhere. Dipping your stick everywhere. Ugipewa, unachukua. Unapewa, unachukua. Sit down. You don't know what it means to be a father. And you're going deeper. Sit down. Some of you, you are pretending to be quiet. But when you are having sex. Uh, <laughs> Sit down, sit down. You, some of the girls who are pretending to be quiet here, they are always saying, kill me. Kill me. Choke me. Nikose Shima. Nidarao. Ah. Sit down. I'm finishing but I'm here to tell you God has sent you here to start transforming your mind to start making your life a holy life to start giving your life meaning to start giving your life direction and I'm telling you how do you transform your mind the Bible says in Romans chapter I think 10 or 9 verse 10. It says that faith comes by hearing. 10 17. It says faith comes by hearing. And hearing. By the word of God. So it's the word of God that changes you. Transforms you. Yeah. I'm telling you. You'll be surprised where, where the word of God has taken me. The word of God. This word. Yeah. Recently I was in Singapore. Because of the word. Singapore. Not, no, no business. The word. If you're wise, you will listen to what I'm telling you today. This word can change your life. All the people that, that we were with who pursued business, others pursued economics... They have never, I don't know anyone who has left the country. But I went to Singapore. I came back. The next day I went to America. I came one day and then I went to America. One week. Then I came back. Then I went to Uganda. Just because of the word. My passport is written pastor. Occupation, pastor. No businessman. After David had served his generation, he died. I want to ask you a question again. Why are you alive? Are you not tired of smoking? Are you not tired of wasting your life? Are you not tired of dancing your life away in discourse? Are you not tired of having illicit sex? Are you not tired of taking drugs? Are you not tired of stealing? Are you, are you not interested to know why you are living? Are you not tired of heartbreaks? Even as I'm talking to you right now, umeachwa. I'm 
I'm asking you a question, my friends. Listen to me, my friends. Are you not tired? Don't you want to know why God has put you in this world? Ignition service has been put in place for people who are searching for their purpose. You are tired of living aimlessly. No, no passion for life. No zeal. You wake up, you start by drinking alcohol. And you are young. You are depressed. You look like a 40 year old and you are only 22. Usha zeka. Hata wakuna watu wana mabesi wako na kuitanga mzae. Buddha. You are a young girl. Mabesi wako na kuitanga maadhe. Auntie. Mzazi. You are 22. You have two children from different fathers who are not present. But God wants to change your life. I finish with John 3.16. How? How do you offer your life to God? The Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If you're tired of not knowing why you're here, if you're tired, are you not tired of even religion? Religion. That is why here we, are, we don't like religion. We don't like religion. We want to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Yeah, that is why we didn't tell you, verse katrefu, ugikuja, toa kofia, yeah. Jaribu kwa ndaile chachi ya madhako na hizo makofia zako uwane kama uta. uta na madredi zako. No. I want you to find God. I want you to find yourself. I want you to find your purpose. But how? You must believe in Jesus and give your life to Jesus. That's how it starts. It looks embarrassing. It looks embarrassing. But when you do it, you have begun a journey out of uselessness, out of good for nothingness. Amen. We have a song for you. We have a song. Am I good for nothing? Yeah. Aimlessness. Aimlessness. Hopelessness. Where when you to a 20 and you're saying I'm having mental problems. I'm tired with life. Tired with life. Ah. You don't pay rent. You don't buy food. You don't buy your clothes. And you're saying I'm tired with life. No, 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 no. no. God is handing you his hand. And he's saying I want to start and give you a new life. I want to give you purpose. That's what God wants to do. I want you to have a turn around. Sit down and listen to this song as we finish. I want you to listen to the song. Meditate on the song.
of the world. You are the light of the world. I want my light to shine before men that they may see my good works. You will have good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. I don't want to hide my light under the table. I want to bring glory, glory to God. I don't want to be good for nothing. I don't want to lose my usefulness. I don't want to be None of you will be useless. Say amen if you believe it. I prophesy to you. None of you will be useless. We arrest you. In the name of Jesus. Against uselessness. In Jesus name. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. With every eye closed. Every head bowed. You're here. You're saying pastor. I'm tired of every eye closed every head bowed not talking to anybody don't look at anybody it's you now you and God God is talking to you every head bowed every eye closed you are saying I am tired of living a useless life I want to give my life to Jesus I want you to just shoot your hand up at the count of three I want you to shoot your hand up. I'll pray with you and usher you into a new life today. In one, two, three. Shoot your hand up. You're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. Lift up your hand strongly. If you're lifting your hand, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. I want to pray with you. You're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. Come. Come. If you're lifting your hand, come. I come, come. You're saying I want to give my life to Jesus. Help them to know how to stand, please. Look at me. Look at me. Face me. Stand there and face me. Come, come, come. You're saying I want to give my life. I don't want to live a useless life. Come, come, come. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Come, 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 come. You're saying I don't want to live a useless life. A useless life. I, you are saying, I don't want to die young. Some of you, if you don't accept this call that God is calling you, you'll die early. You'll die of HIV. Some, right now, God is speaking to you and is telling you, go. And another voice is telling you, see Leo, stay. But I'm calling you for the last time. Come. Walk out of your seat and come. We are singing this song and waiting for you. You're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. Come. You're the last. This is the last call. I'm not calling you again. Come, come, come. Yes. Yes. We are excited. Come. You're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. Come, come. Come. Yes, I'm, I don't want to be a useless person. I don't want to be a useless person. Come, come. I give myself away. Oh, I'm waiting for you. I'm. You guys are not celebrating this, people. I give myself away. Now there is a young girl. A young girl. God is calling you. There is a young girl. God is telling you, go. And even as I was preaching, you were feeling that is my message. You, whoever that girl is, if you don't come, I pray for you that God will preserve you. I'm praying for you to be loosed. Don't be a fan of demons. When you're not born again, demons have become your God. And so I'm waiting for that young girl to come. Come out now. I'm waiting for you. We are clapping for you. Come. Listen, I'm calling you. Come now. 
Now, this is the last call. I'm not going to call you again. I'm going to count. One, two, three. If you're coming, come. That young girl. You've been sleeping around. You've been having problems. You are, you are going to be pregnant if you don't play around. If you keep play, playing around. I'm waiting for you. This young girl. You're saying, I want to come. all right now i want us to pray for these ones look at me everyone look at me god is going to change your life amen from now this is the beginning of a great change amen. in your life Jesus. oh yes are you listening to me yes. are you listening to me it's the beginning if you get saved today and you start following up your life will never be the same again so i want you to close your eyes and i want you to repeat this prayer after me close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me say lord jesus lord jesus put your right hand on your chest like this say lord jesus lord jesus i surrender i surrender my life my life to you to you i ask you i ask you to forgive me to forgive me of all my sins of all my sins wash me wash me with your precious blood with your precious blood from today from today i give my life to jesus i give my life to jesus i allow jesus i allow jesus to be the lord to be the lord and the savior and the savior of my life of my life from today from today jesus jesus rule my life rule my life order my life order my life write my name write my name in the book of life in the book of life my name is my name is say your name my name is jimmy masharia write my name write my name in the book of life in the book of now life. i want you to stretch your finger like this tell satan 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 i don't belong to you i don't belong to you from now on from now on i am a child of god i am a child of god i serve god i serve god i live for god i live for god in the name of jesus in the name of jesus now holy spirit Tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit fill, my life. fill my life. Give me a new tongue. Give me a new, tongue. Give me a new life. Give me, a new life. Give, me new Give me new desires. In the name of Jesus name Christ. Of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this salvation. Thank you because you will preserve them. Thank you because one day they will give testimonies yes. that their life changed oh, when yes. they walked to the front. Amen. Change their lives. Yes. Grow them. Yes. Make them great. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody shout amen. Amen.